Hey everyone, it's Victor here, and today I'm going to talk about hair. More specifically, hair and trans people, which is a very complex subject. My own hair journey is quite an important thing to me. It's very close to my heart, hair. Sounds weird. I am a hairdresser, which I suppose is a strange thing to say, considering I'm just newly qualified. I'm not used to it yet, but I am a hairdresser, so I have some direct knowledge of hair, which I suppose helps me talk about this, even though, really, the reason I'm talking about this is more to do with kind of trans people and their identity regarding their hair, and how cis people, people who are identify with the gender they were given at birth, they seem to get away with a lot more creatively with their hair than trans people do. Let's start with my story with my hair because it's a complex one. It's a, it's a it's a long and strange one. So grab yourself a cup of tea or whatever your beverage of choice is and let's get into this. Since I was very, very young, and I'm talking like primary school, like, you know, nursery to primary school, I always took pride in having my hair quite long. And I always enjoyed having long hair. When I say long, for a boy, for a, the, the idea of a societal, societally accepted male child, of which I wasn't viewed as, because I am, probably should have said that at the start, I am FTM transgender, so I was assigned female at birth, and I have now transitioned, and I am more comfortable with myself now, I feel aligned with my body. But basically, when I was really small, in nursery, I had kind of, you know, shoulder length hair, and specifically, I remember watching The Jungle Book, and realizing that Mowgli had the same hair as me. This image of, like, a free-spirited, little boy who walked around everywhere in his little loincloth and no shirt and just lived his best life. He was just being a child. I mean, yeah, he was raised by wolves. Not the ideal childhood, but obviously in a Disney film, it looks great. And when I was little, I used to see that and think, oh my God, yeah, I'm like a wild, I'm like a wild kid. And I used to play a lot in the garden and lose myself in my own imagination. And that's something that was so special to me, having like a really special childhood, and I did have a very special childhood. But I, even from a young age, used to have kind of identity crises when it came to my hair, because I was being placed in the position of, you have to be the princess, but part of me always felt like it was wrong. Even though I always wanted long hair, so I used to see Jasmine with her hair in plaits and stuff and like all, you know, done up. And I would go, oh my god, that's clearly what I have to do with my hair. That's clearly where I need to go because I am supposedly this female child that everyone assumes me to be. So I grew my hair out quite long, so long that I could sit on it and it became almost a comfort blanket having this hair. And I loved it, and I used to plait it, I used to put beads in it, and for a long time, pre-puberty, I never really experienced dysphoria from my hair. That's something that was really interesting to me looking back, is, if anything, I loved having long locks. And it's very strange to me that we make this assumption in society that long hair is ultimately feminine. There are many cultures, historically, where long hair was actually a sign of masculinity. But throughout history, men have also donned long hair. But obviously, in our era that we live in now, short hair, I think especially after the war, became this ideal of masculinity. Short hair is practical. It doesn't get in the way. When you start to think of 17th, 18th century fops and dandies, you often think of the long wigs, of the long hair, of the, the flamboyant nature of their costume. And I used to watch loads of historically inspired films where I would see these men in their socks and shorts with their flowy shirts and their long hair with bows and wearing jewellery and makeup. And I used to see these as a kid and really see myself in that. But I remember one very strange instance where my hair did cause me dysphoria. In primary three, which I'm not sure what that would be in American school, grade three, first grade, second grade, third, third grade, I suppose you'd call it. So my hair was 
very long and I absolutely loved it but I think probably my mum was sick of brushing it or it was just getting a bit raggedy because obviously getting your split ends cut off is very important. That is a real thing. Please make sure you get your split ends cut off. Make sure you get trims occasionally. Don't let it grow out and go all ratty. It's not good. But anyway, child me didn't know this. But my mum took me to a hairdresser for I think was the it was the first time I'd been to a hairdresser. I was only in primary three. And my hair, again, like I said, I could sit on it. This hairdresser, and I don't know if my mum even agreed to this, this hairdresser cut my hair here. Right by my jawline and gave me a full fringe. A proper, like, Edna Mode haircut. Right? Great look, great look if you want to rock it. But for this little trans boy, who was going to school and had loved his, like, cavalier hair so much and was a little wild child that liked to, you know, just let it grow out and, and go crazy. This very blunt and very ultra-feminine cut was the most horrific thing. I remember crying and crying and crying. And when I went back to school, everyone made fun of me. It was... It was horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. And I remember probably that that was the first instance of feeling genuine dysphoria about my hair. I would felt dysphoria in other ways, but I feel like it's unrelated. Dysphoria about putting on dresses, absolutely. I had dysphoria about that. I used to cry when my mum put me in a gingham dress, even though I weirdly loved the... This was the weird thing, right? Just to go on a tangent slightly. I absolutely loved the look of the gingham dresses. I used to look at them and go, oh my god, the colour and the, the, the feel of the fabric and oh, it's so beautiful. But if I put them on and then looked at myself in the mirror before I went to school, I used to sob. And I would just, when I looked in the mirror, I just thought I was like a monkey in, in a dress. That's how I felt. So even more so, when I had this haircut, which was like blunt fringe, right up to my, you know, like, like, like a kind of like 20s flapper bob, it just... It broke my little heart. And after that, I kind of vowed I would never cut my hair again. <laughs> Not to that length, ever, 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 ever. I hated it. And so I grew it out, and I grew it out to around kind of probably this length, and I kept it around this length for a very, very long time. So let's fast forward way past high school because I went through the whole of high school not realizing I was trans, having a few slight bisexual panic moments. You know, I'll go through that in another video. Flash forward to 2015 when I suddenly discover non-binary people and I'm like, oh my god, what the hell? What the hell is this? This is speaking to my soul. Oh my god. Even though now I'm transmasculine, I'm FTM, I identify as male, at the beginning of my discovery of myself, I felt identifying as non-binary was a really accurate thing for me. And I think I hadn't quite figured out my identity. And no one should rush you figuring out your identity. That is completely personal to you. And if you have to go through, you know, being non-binary, being gender fluid, to being trans, or being trans to then being non-binary, whatever way you get to yourself is valid. It can take years, years to discover who you really are and how you want to identify. So flash forward to 2015 when I discovered I was non-binary, for want of a better word, at the time, I cut off all my hair. I finally experienced the feeling of trying to pass. And that is when it got complicated. As a pre-medically transitioned person, and at that time I didn't even think I wanted to medically transition, I was so, so desperate for people to see me as more masculine because I wanted to go over onto the scale of masculine. I had been given feminine from birth. That was what I'd been given. That, that was all I had. So having long hair, which society so calls feminine, that was too much on the feminine side. If there was a scale and that was feminine and this was male, I had to somehow fit here in this moment. And I thought, what can I do to fit slightly in between the masculine and the feminine without medically transitioning? Cut my hair short. So I did. I had my hair short for a very long time. It was very joyous for me at that moment because I finally felt like I was taking control of 
my gender, which is something I'd never done before. I had always just been in the box of, I guess, a girl. You know, I mean, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't a very good one because I never was one, but the masquerade had to be kept up one way or another because I didn't understand, I didn't even know that trans people existed until I was, what age would I have been in 2015? 20? Until I was around 20. I didn't, I didn't know they existed. So didn't really have much of a, of a leg up in that area. I just was vastly miserable all the time about my body and my identity and the way I looked. I just thought I was ugly. I just, I just was trans and I didn't understand that. So I cut my hair short and I liked it. I, I liked the euphoria I got from it. I felt like maybe people would respect me more. And on first impression, some people did gender me as male. And at the time, even though I was non-binary, I felt like that was good enough for people to gender me as male. Obviously then, as the years went by, I realized I only wanted to be seen as male. And that was a really big step for me because that meant I needed people to see me as male all the time. The mistake of someone misgendering me was too painful. And I rejected all of my alternative fashion. I just wore blue button ups all the time and I had my natural hair color. It was really short, really traditionally wartime masculine, trying to be as man-man as possible for the general public, not for myself, for the general public, because I was so afraid of being misgendered at that time. I started testosterone and the man-man presenting continued for about a year, I wanna say. I wanna say maybe I would have been about a year on T before I, started to think, is this really how I want to identify? Is this cookie cutter man that I've become really the person I am? So as the time went by and my voice broke and I became more comfortable in my body and when I knew that top surgery was on the horizon, I began growing out my hair. It was an awkward process. I started growing out my hair in about 2019 and it was, it started off as like an awkward mullet. I want it to be this straight away. And you know, I've got here eventually, but everyone has to start somewhere. So I started with an awkward mullet. It kind of, you know, I, I grew it out to kind of around here. I dyed it black, which was a mistake. Got all the videos about the dyeing hair mistakes I've made. Go and watch that if you want to be entertained and cringe horribly now that I'm a qualified hairdresser and I know so much better myself. I went through so many versions of growing out my hair, mostly because I messed it up with bleach. So it would get longer, I'd have to cut it short again. It would get longer, I'd have to cut it short again. But that was because I was growing out the bleach damage and the black dye. Don't mess about with your hair unsupervised. It's a bad idea, especially if your hair means a lot to you, which mine does. So I was becoming more comfortable with myself. I was growing my hair out. I was feeling like, yeah, I'm, I'm the cavalier man I always should be. I'm the vampire long haired elven man that has always lived inside of me. But it's not always that simple. In fact, nothing in life is ever that simple, especially when you're a trans person who wants to present themselves a little differently. So I now had long blonde hair. Now I've realized something about humanity, specifically about the cis male straight part of humanity, is they will see long blonde hair and that is like a red rag to a bull. I have been wolf whistled, cat called, oddly flirted with, and then had to kind of like do the man man thing like, oh, sorry mate, uh, yeah, cheers, cheers for that, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, appreciate that mate, yeah, mm. You've got to do the kind of like super man-man interaction to realize like, hey mate, I'm not what you think I am. I'm actually a guy with long hair. But it got to me. And at one point, and I actually have footage of this, I decided to cut off a lot of my hair and go really short again. Like, like kind of this short. Like back to my primary school like length that I hated so much. But I just thought if my hair's short, maybe people won't misgender me all the time and they won't like oddly flirt with me like these straight men. It's just very uncomfortable for me. So I filmed my hair before I got it all cut off and you like 
forgive how I look in this, but I was absolutely miserable. Today's the day I've officially decided to cut my hair. Uh, so yeah, just want something a little bit more mask, a little bit more, you know, me. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think my length of hair is like just, is it just above shoulder length? Or just shoulder length? I quite like the length of these pieces. Maybe I'll make little bits a little shorter at the back. I don't know. You know, medium length hair, I guess you call it. So that is the plan. So I'll update you on that later. I'd look forward to growing my hair out so much and just felt like it would be me, that would finally be me in my perfect form. This like elven vampire prince that I always assumed I could become. And people just saw me as a woman with long blonde hair. And it was awful. And again, Society made me do it. The stupid men in the streets made me cut my hair short because I thought they might respect me. I thought they might not look at me and think I was a woman and, and, and interact with me like that. And I cut my hair and for about a week I was like, oh, thank God, thank God, and I can pass now. Um, yeah, after about a week I was just miserable again and I wanted to grow my hair out because it wasn't me. And it's upsetting that I have been through this cycle because it happened more than once. I kept getting my hair cut short again just because people were misgendering me, just because people saw me differently from who I really am. But after that very, very short haircut, <laughs> I kept growing it out and it's now as long, nearly as long as it was before. That's the thing, you've got to get a cut which flatters your face shape. So you need to make sure you get it shaped nicely. And I finally found the shape that I think works for me, where it's a little bit more layered. And because I have natural curls, it goes really well with it as well when it's curly. My hair's blow dried. This is not what it's naturally like. It's naturally quite ringlessy. So I've got to this stage and I realized I really wanted to talk about hair and trans people because I finally feel now that I am comfortable in myself. And don't get me wrong, I have hard days where someone misgenders me and I go, oh my God, I want to chop off all my hair. But I try to resist. I really try to resist because that cutting my hair off is like getting rid of a part of myself. It's like getting rid of a part of my personality. And I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to do that for strangers that don't even know me. And it opened up a thought process for me that hair and trans people is one of the most complicated things. To be fair, trans people in clothes, trans people in, and makeup, there's so many things we could talk about. But, but hair is such a huge part of many people's identity. I mean, you know, many trans women are judged if they do not grow their hair out long because people say you're not trying hard enough. The same thing for trans men like me who grow out their hair and people say I'm not trying hard enough because I'm not fitting into the fashion of what is expected of men. Although ironically, long hair in men at the moment is actually quite fashionable. So I feel like, like I'm watching like Mark Blair and Jacksepticeye and I'm just like, you're both growing your hair out. <laughs> this is, this is so funny how it, 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 fashion comes in waves of like what is acceptable for men and women to do traditionally. But that shouldn't stop you for ex from expressing yourself in the way that you want to. Don't follow everyone else what they're doing. I mean, if you're a trans woman and you want short hair, do it. Why should you care if someone's gonna be like, you're not trying hard enough. I know how that feels. But if you're like a tomboy trans woman, you are as valid as any ultra feminine trans woman. You don't have to prove your identity to other people. I mean, yes, as a trans person, we can experience more fear from our identities, from walking out there and being ourselves. Like, you know, when I when I go out and I have long hair and, but I also like have a flat chest and you know, my shirt kind of open a bit and I'm like speaking in a way which, you know, makes people read me as masculine. That can be a dangerous thing to do because I'm quite petite, I'm small. People don't know where to place me. They don't know where to place me in the binary that they have in their brain like, oh. Are you Hello Kitty or Pom Pom Purin? Which I understand are the two genders. They have to have this simple categorizing. We don't understand that because we express ourselves just the way we want to. And everyone should be like that. Cis people, cis people can dress however they want. 
In the salon I work in, many, many women come in and they have cropped, basically crew cut hair. But I swear to God, if a trans woman does that, it's suddenly like this big issue. But no, so many cis women have short hair and that's fine, apparently. And so many cis men have longer hair than me, and that's fine, apparently. But when you're trans, it's somehow you're not trying hard enough. And it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it does. It makes, it makes perfect sense to me because I know that trans people get hated on. And, you know, we are discriminated against. And it is direct discrimination to judge how we have our hair, or how we wear our clothes. But I want to remind you on how important it is to s stick to your guns and be yourself because when I'm alone in my house or with people I love and who care about me, I don't feel dysphoric. I don't feel upset that I have long blonde hair. This is, this is who I want to be. This is how I want to present myself. And that's what I'm telling you today is do not let society choose how you present yourself. It is so, so important because you might feel good going out there and passing and people seeing you the, the, as your gender identity. But when you get home and you look in the mirror and you go, is this really who I want to be? Is this really the look I want to give off? It's, it's sad. It's heartbreaking because you are so self-made as a trans person. You should be entirely self-made in every way that you can choose how you present yourself. You shouldn't have to fit into that box that someone else has made for you. You're not gonna fit in it. I didn't fit in it. It wasn't made for me. And there are plenty of trans men that want to have short hair and that's perfectly fine. That is who you are, but this is who I am. And I'm proud of it. And I really hope I don't get tempted to cut my hair really, really, really short again. I really like it at this length. I think if it gets much longer, it might be hard to manage, which would be the only reason I would get it trimmed. But I just want to remind you, regardless of your identity, have your hair however you want it. Just be yourself, literally. It's that easy. It should be. The best way to tell if you're actually being true to yourself is judging how you feel about yourself when you're home alone looking in the mirror. That is the most true sense of how you feel. It's not what your friends think. It's not what your family thinks. It's not what society and strangers think that are outside. It's what you think when you look at yourself. And when I look in the mirror now, I think, yeah, that's a vampire boy. That's, that's, a, that's an elven, that's someone from Rivendell I might know. I romanticize a lot. You might not do that, but I do. Don't listen to anyone else. If someone says cut your hair, don't. If you want to cut your hair, do it. If you want to grow out your hair, do it. If you want to go blonde, if you want to go pink, if you want to go purple, if you want to whatever, just do it. No one is you. There is no other you in this world. So why would you try and be like the guy on the magazine that you see that you're just like, oh, he's a man. Anyway, that that's my, that's my hair rant. You know my hair story now. There's probably more to unpack. If you think of anything, please put it in the comments. I'd love to talk more about this. I love talking about gender identity and, and all these things. I think it's such a vast subject to cover. We're probably never going to get through it all. But thank you all for being here, for supporting me, for hanging around, especially during this strange time when I've been away doing my apprenticeship. It means a lot to me. But anyway, for now, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you very soon.